Dolphins live ladder. They are top of the table. Uh, unbelievable. New franchise and there's been a lot of talk about the Dolphins roster and their inability to sign a marquee player, but they're going out and getting the job done, playing with a lot of fight and spirit. Hamasai Tabuai Fido put his name in the history books. Oh, Great hit again, Kafusi. Oh, oh, oh. You think everyone underestimated their experience in their forward pack? Absolutely. We're talking about Jesse Bromwich, Kenny Bromwich, Felice Kafusi, a couple of young guys. Especially that guy on screen, Felice Kafusi, he's been inspiring this Dolphins outfit. Wayne Bennett at the helm. This isn't a fluke for him. To do it with the Dolphins, it's been an incredible start to the year and he's he's been behind it. What a try, Brisbane! That is electric from the Broncos! I've got to say, Brisbane, a bit of premiership threat for sure. <laughs> they can turn it on like anyone. They've got some spark in their side. Reese Walsh will seal it for Brisbane! You get their centres, Tony Staggs, Herbie Farnworth. And then all these young players coming through, they're exciting and they're only going to get better. Well, that is some win. It's going to be a buzz in Brisbane. These two teams had this one circled a long time ago. They're undefeated, we're undefeated. A new team in the comp in Brisbane, so, um, yeah, we're going to have it out. No one would have picked that at the start of the year, but that's happened now, and uh, it's a pretty big game next week. It'll be about who owns Brisbane, right? That's the storyline. The Broncos will want to bring that gritty style that they took down to Penrith. Otherwise, the Dolphins might surprise them too. It's worthy of a let's trot, baby, isn't it? What a matchup it'll be Friday night here on Nine. Dolphin v Bronco, both three from three. Top of the table clash in front of a sellout crowd. No one, no one. I can't even imagine, Gal, what the odds would have been <laughs> to, to pick this, this match, being in the circumstances around it. It's a gift from the Rugby League gods. It sure is, and the, the Dolphins have been outstanding, and so are the Broncos, but I suppose the Dolphins have been more impressive their first year in the season, unable to sign a so-called marquee player, and they're three from three, and they've been brilliant. And look, it's, it's no secret, they're playing simple Rugby League. Like, their completion rate on the weekend was 88%. You give you completed 80% in any game, you were in, in every single game you're playing, and that's what they've done so well. They've completed well, and they've defended well, and they've had guys who can score points. Like, the leadership of their guys... Yeah, you know, the Kafusi, the Bromwich brothers have been absolutely outstanding. Gilbert at lock has been unbelievable. Um, so they've been fantastic. And the Broncos on top of that, they've been good. I've been so impressed with the Broncos forwards. Payne Haas, Carrigan, Flegler, Kirk Capel, his leadership there has been great. And that them two there, Ezra yeah. Mann has been absolutely outstanding. And I'm going to say, Reese Walsh, he's a better player than I thought. He really is. He's such a dog. He's so fast. Well, I thought round one when Cobbo played fullback, I thought they may have thought about keeping him there because I know he's been a fullback coming through as a youngster and he played really, really well round one. He had some moments in round one that weren't so good for him, but overall he had a really, really good game. And I thought there's a chance they might keep him at fullback. He played that well, but Walsh has come back and hasn't missed a beat and he's been really, really good. Gus, they haven't even played their first match yet, but where could this go as a rivalry in the National Rugby League? It's been vital. We've been campaigning for a long, long time for more than one team in, in, in Brisbane. Uh, the Broncos have campaigned to keep anyone else out because they wanted the monopoly. <laughs> but now, uh, I think competition is good for them. Mm. I think the lack of competition was actually bad for them. And I think that this is now is the sort of rivalry that they want across town. I'd put another team in Brisbane. I'd give these two something to think about as well because there's plenty of room for it. But the Broncos campaigned for a long, long time and it, it was wrong of our game to allow them to resist the introduction of another team into South East Queensland. The Dolphins are there now and they're worse... Nightmare is that Wayne Bennett is coaching them and he's got this team ready. I don't think they'll have any problem winning on Friday night. I think they'll beat Redcliffe quite convincingly. But the rivalry is the thing. Will he throw something out there, Wayne, to up against Kevy just to sort of distract, get, put all the attention on the Broncos? It could be anything. It could be anything. But I guarantee you that his press conference this week will probably have nothing to do with the game, more to do with something like global warming or... <laughs> coal-fired power or something or other. He will, he will come up with something just to distract everything. Or, or, or he will declare Adam Reynolds the greatest halfback that ever played the game. <laughs> Should be playing for New South Wales and Australia. And then he'll send his team out there to spoil his night. So that's <laughs> pretty much Wayne Bennett. Gus, I noticed on your Twitter, um, Reese Walsh was getting a lot of mentions. You saw him up close and personal. Can you tell us a little about what you... I mean, we see the electric speed. What do you like about him when you, when you watch him play? Because, I mean, you know him probably better than any of us. Yeah, he, he's a genuine superstar. Mm. Genuine superstar. I mean, and I've sort of known this was coming. And, and, you know, whilst I was disappointed for the Warriors that, that he left, it was certainly good for him to get back home to the Brisbane Broncos. And I saw him at our launch in Queensland up in Brisbane you know, just before the start of the season. And he was that excited to be back in Brisbane and playing for the Broncos. That's where all kids up there want to grow up and play for. 
Um, and he's a genuine superstar. And he's, he's a couple of games of fullback there have been out of this world. And he's only going to get better. I remember the day he turned up at Warriors training. I was doing a bit of consultancy work up there. And he came up for his first session. And he trained at 5'8", opposite the Warriors first grade team as I was getting ready to play. And Roger Tuivasa Shek was the fullback for the Warriors. And he went up to Nathan Brown and he said, put him in this week. Hmm. He said, I'll play on the wing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, no, I haven't seen yeah. it. I mean, and he, and he did, and weeks. he did. They put him in two weeks later and Roger Tuovasek went on the but win. When he was at the Warriors in years gone, boy, I haven't seen this, how good he is. He, he's, um, like I said, he's a better player than I thought. He's a he's, superstar. He's an absolute star, he is. Yeah. Well, he's well, a Will the Dolphins have Felice Kafusi? He's off to the judiciary going for a da- downgrade on that late hit. Look, I wouldn't think... This is how tight the game is. I mean, he has done that the last three weeks, two weeks straight, and now, God, he's been there just half a metre early. That's how close it is. But I, I can't... Look, I can't see him getting off that. The, the way the rules are these days, um, look, I, I'd, I'd love to see him get off. I'd love to see him play his game because I think if he plays in this game, it, it will be close. I, I do agree with Gus. I think the Broncos will be too strong. I think they might fall from the perch, the Dolphins. But I'd love to see him out there. He does sort of half pull out of it at the back end of it. Like, mm-hmm. He certainly does move his arm backwards. But I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. If, they show, if they show a clip of all his other tackles this year... Oh, they've been where he gave so, it to Brandon so Smith, so and he gave it, yeah, he's given it to blacks, and everyone's been applauding him for it. Because you know what? It wasn't a halfback. Yeah, like, he's a, he's a, a halfback. he was a half step too late. Because yeah, he wasn't a, a half back, step We're too late. To, we have this theory in the game that made it half But no chance to pull out. Protected. Yeah, but no chance to pull I, I, out. I, I well, agree they, with that. well, they use the Joseph Swalley one as, as part of the case to try and get the, the downgrade. He should be not be sitting on the sideline for that. There is no way in the world he deserved to be sitting on the sideline for that. No way in the world. But they'll find a way. Sounds like they'll be using this to, well, that, well, to help their case. <laughs> it's four, it goes from three to four weeks if he fails, so it's a, it's a fair roll of the dice yeah, too. And if he does does succeed, he gets a fine. Oh. Is that it? Is that right? Yeah, so, a fine. He's yeah, there Friday. He plays his speed. Yeah, that's a that's a big gamble. But they, they need him. He is he's a leader of that team. Yeah, him himself and the Bromwich boys. Absolutely, that you can see the impact they've had. It's been a, and look at look on the other side of the coin. Look at the Melbourne Storm. Look where they're at because they've lost guys like that. So the, he's an absolute leader. They need him without a doubt. I think it's probably worth the roll. You're making the trip up to Brisbane for it, Cal? Uh, I'll be up there, no, mate. I'll work Thursday. I'm at, I'm at the GF. Sure you don't want to come to Queensland? I don't want to go to Queensland, <laughs>